let's discuss uh, leukemia. Leukemia is a cancer of the blood. It involves the white blood cells. And this is unique because it's basically a liquid tumor. Most tumors are solid and they're a solid mass. And if you catch it early enough, you can cut it out before it metastasizes to other tissues. But with the leukemia, it's unique. You know, it's in your blood, so it's all throughout your body. And it's the different white blood cell lines that get affected with a mutation. And it can be, it's just one single clone that gets mutated. And from that point on, all that one single clone's descendants proliferate out of control. And typically these cells are completely non-functional because um, they get released into the blood before they can mature and before they become specialized. So there's four different categories that leukemias can fall under. Um, two broad categories, myelocytic leukemia. It involves the, the myeloblast descendant and then lymphocytic leukemia. And we're to understand this better, we'll look at this, this lineage of leukopoiesis or the formation of leukocytes, AKA white blood cells. It all starts with a stem cell that's found in the red bone marrow called a hemocytoblast. And the hemocytoblast will divide and it'll go one of two ways. Initially, it'll either go to the myeloid stem cell or the lymphoid. So the myeloid stem cells, these go on to produce red blood cells and um, certain white blood cells and uh, platelets. And then the lymphoid stem cells, they go on to produce our T and B lymphocytes. So whenever you can have either um, acute or chronic leukemias, and so you can have acute myeloid leukemia or acute lymphoid or you can have chronic myeloid or chronic lymphoid. And so that kind of gets our four different categories. Let's talk about just in general, instead of talking about all the nuances between each individual one, uh, they all kind of present with similar symptoms. One is pancytopenia, cytopenia, pancytopenia. So pan is talking about all the blood form, all the blood components, you know, platelets, white blood cells, red blood cells. And anytime you hear penia, it means that you don't have enough. So pancytopenia is talking about having functional red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. So you have, a, you may, your white blood cell count may be through the roof because you have all these immature leukocytes or white blood cells that are, you know, spilling out from the bone. But actual functional ones that actually do work, they're getting weeded out because all these, these non-functional uh, cancerous white blood cells are kind, of, are kind of weeding out all the, the, the functional ones, just like weeds can weed out the plants in a garden. So the presenting symptoms a lot of times will be anemia from the lack of functional red blood cells. And this presents itself as pallor, malaise, which just means you, you know, don't feel energetic and shortness of breath because um, you're trying to get more oxygen in to get more energy. Uh, neutropenia uh, can present itself as more frequent infections. So neutrophils are one of the white blood cells and it does a good job of protecting us, especially from bacterial infections. And so you can get bacterial infections like pneumonia much easier when you have leukemia. Thrombocytopenia is where you have a low number of platelets. Uh, another name for a platelet is a thrombocyte. Penia means not enough of. So uh, thrombocytopenia will present itself as excessive bleeding time. So you might have a minor cut that, that, that bleeds. Uh, petechiae, which are little uh, little miniature bruise type things that can can surface up on the skin. Of course, excess bruising, uh, uh, bleeding gums, 
epistaxis, which is uh, increased nosebleeds. So all those are consistent with thrombocytopenia. Like any cancer, weight loss is a, is a common symptom. Weight loss is because all that glucose and energy that you're taking in through your diet is being stolen by these cancerous cells. And um, there's not as much nutrition left over for your cells if you have this disease. And um, one that kind of stands out, so those, those can kind of be similar for a lot of things, but one that really stands out is bone pain. Uh, patients who suffer from leukemia, there's so many immature white blood cells in the, the bone itself that it pushes against the bone and causes pain. Uh, lymph adenopathy, so this are uh, where your lymph nodes, especially uh, in the sternum area, or, or excuse me, um, up in the, around the jaw area, can be swollen. Uh, bone pain, especially is especially in these patients, shows up a lot of times in the sternum, ribs, and tibia. And then uh, if, uh, if you're a clinician and you suspect somebody has leukemia, there's different things you can do. One is you can uh, get a biopsy of the uh, marrow and aspirate with a needle. Uh, you know, you might go into a, a superficial bone like the sternum or the hip and aspirate some uh, of the contents out and look at it under a microscope and assess it for these immature uh, blood cells. One thing to keep in mind too is acute leukemias are more aggressive than the chronic ones. Acute ones will typically happen higher up on this, this lineage. This, this is just an abbreviated part. It goes on and on and on down below. But uh, chronic ones will happen below where, where you see here in a, in a cell that has a little bit more function. So the chronic cells may have some function, just not, not to the extent of a healthy cell. So this is a, you can see here where if this is what you would expect to see with somebody with leukemia, just a whole bunch of non-specialized white blood cells just everywhere, taking up, weeding out everything else. Um, and they just crowd out all the other uh, white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. Something to worry about with leukemia is internal hemorrhage because you have all these overwhelming infections and you have thrombocytopenia, which doesn't clot uh, these internal infections or these internal hemorrhages. So uh, that can be a common cause of death. Um, of the different leukemias, the one that's most common in kids is acute lymphocytic leukemia. Uh, in fact, 70% of people with ALL, acute lymphocytic leukemia, are kids. And like, as far as treatment, the treatment with a lot of these is chemo and radiation. Chemotherapy is a blunt tool and we can't, we can't isolate the tumor and cut it out. So you have to hit it with the chemotherapy, which is a nasty drug. Fortunately for ALL patients, um, there is a targeted therapy called Gleevec and it's a tyrosine kinase inhibitor and What's nice about it is it can go in and target with, with very little side effects. You know, chemotherapy has terrible side effects. So um, cancer is a really tough disease to treat. The best thing to do is prevent it, eliminate carcinogens such as ultraviolet radiation and from the sun, x-rays, cigarette smoke, the, the carcinogens in that on and on and on, pesticides. But if you get uh, cancer, uh, hopefully, you know, the scientists and researchers are trying to find more of these targeted therapies like Gleevec that can treat the cancers like, AL, it, it, like it does for ALL without having to um, go rely as much on the chemotherapy and radiation. You know, the main side effect of chemo one of the main side effects of chemotherapy and radiation is more cancer. You may treat this cancer, but it causes so many mutations and cells, you may get a completely different cancer five years down the road. Uh, 